enter your participant ID followed by pound. Otherwise, just press pound to continue. You are in the meeting now. There are two participants in the meeting. This meeting is being recorded. You are muted. You can mute or unmute yourself by pressing star six. You can mute yourself. You are unmuted. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. Oh my God. Hang up your phone or mute your phone. Okay. I think we're good. We can start. Well, hello, everybody. Um, this is the Sustainable Bethel Commission on November 15th, 7 p.m., or a little bit after 7, 7 06 p.m. And our first item on the agenda is Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have, have there been any correspondence? Oh, there you go. Let's see him. Yeah. <laughs> Course, Gotta I'm love sure. technology, right? I <laughs> can't live with it, can't live without it. Um, are, is there any correspondence or any emails? No. Okay. Hello, any... can you hear me now? We can. Awesome. <laughs> are there any public comments? I would like to make a public comment. Billy Michael, 27 and a half, Leapard Avenue. I like to come here as a member of the public and constantly re reaffirm my opposition to this commission going for that bronze mm -hmm. status for a uh, equity coach. I want to be on record as an equity coach. And I, I believe I've spoken against the transit oriented district to this commission. If I haven't, I've spoken to other commissions about my opposition to the transit oriented district, the entire philosophy behind it, the loss of local autonomy and personal freedom. And uh, I want to go on record as, as um, or to be noted, noting that there was a Republican candidate that just won election for the planning and zoning on a Republican suite of local government. And in his, oh, in the, but she was really, but what, what I meant was, okay. yeah, yeah, well, probably. Um, he, a plank of his, his campaign was, oh, yeah. I want to abolish the transit oriented district to which there was no voter outcry. There was no backlash against the candidacy of Kenny Parsons who ran on the premise, I want to abolish the transit oriented district. So for someone like me, who oftentimes feels like a voice in the wilderness on the TOD and an equity coach, I just wanted to say to this commission that somebody was just elected to office in Bethel that opposed, public, publicly opposed the transit oriented district. That's my commentary for November. Thank you, Matt. I'm Cynthia McCorkendale, 19 Elgin Avenue. <clears throat> so somewhat echoing Billy's sentiment, but um, even more so, uh, I, don't, I don't think that this town in general has an appetite for TOD. I don't. In fact, I've, I've been working with, and we would never really even be an ally, my neighbor, who is a staunch Democrat, I'm registered independent, but I'm conservative, and we formed a partnership. We have a Facebook group, Stop Over Building Bethel, <clears throat> excuse me. She ran for planning and zoning and did not win as a Democrat. Um, there's a lot of pushback on TOD, and it seems like the people <clears throat> or um, organizations who want to push this are just pushing through with it, it not really hearing what the people are saying. And a lot of it is driven by state uh, legislation that is wholly unfair to any everybody but the builder and the developer. So. And I'm a capitalist. I believe you know you should be able to develop your land, but there's also being a, a good neighbor. And I think that a lot of these rules, I think we have to stop whatever you know because and there's no transit. There's just no transit. And to think that people will be willing to be at the behest of a bus schedule or air and train coming now and then, it's just not practical. And it just um, a lot of people are up in arms about it. So 
I don't know how much your commission is involved in that. And I also echo Billy's uh, concern about the certification, the certification from the state that requires that you have an equity coach because it's almost like, um, cause you know, I read the emails and there's like, oh, well, 69 towns have, you know, or belong to like are certified to going for every town in Connecticut to have the same kind of commission. It's just not gonna work in, it's in all of Connecticut. And I don't think it's necessarily gonna be very popular here. That's all. Thank you, Cynthia. Anybody else from the public would like to say something? Okay. Oh, my remarks. Okay. Um, so we um, have a, a one more opening um, on the commission. We now have a commission of six and we have one more and working towards that, hopefully by next month that will be filled. Um, I spoke to the town about the communication. Um, the town has revamped their website and some of their social media. Um, it's important that we have, we get our page back, the, so the Sustainable Bethel page, as well as um, have some access or have the access to the Facebook page. So we're working towards that with the IT department. Um, since we have a lot going on and we want to be able to communicate digitally um, in another way. Um, regarding the Sustainable Connecticut, um, Tia will um, talk a little bit about it during the commissioner reports, but we are working together, all of us collecting information from the town and other groups to upload to the online application. Um, regarding the toolkit that's required, we did speak about the AARP walk audit to comply with this component of the certification. And Gabriella and also Kelly will be volunteering to um, lead that effort. And you can talk about it a little bit if you, you know, just a, as a real high level summary later on the commissioner report. Um, and we're looking at a date in mid May. Um, the community match grant, like I said before, the Bethel Arts Group will be submitting something related to that. Um, last month, we talked about the food pantry. They're not interested because they already did a fundraising um, and there was some confusion about qualifications, but I believe that has been clarified. If they do choose to participate with the community match grant, um, they do qualify. And we also have some interest from the Bethel Land Trust. Um, I met with the um, Housatonic Resource Recovery Authority's Regional Recycling Task Force last week. And in addition to uh, lear um, learning about what everything everything that's going on in the state related to recycling and reuse, et cetera, um, that includes not only the recycling, but all the food waste and everything like that, and the also the Regional Recycling Billboard Contest, they are looking at um, doing a regional repair cafe. We spoke about that several months ago, um, and it, it would be a great thing for, for a regional effort to be able to coordinate uh, vendors that would offer their services to repair small appliances and bikes and watches, and also teach people how to do this. So, it, so in, in essence, instead of throwing something out that may be broken, they will teach people how to um, fix it and so they, that so that will help decrease the um, the uh, waste stream. Um, so we're looking into that, and there may be a possibility that that could be part of or say, but we're not sure yet. So we're going to follow up with that. Um, I had a conversation about the transportation and parking study. They're still gathering information and putting together a presentation related to the tran the transportation or traffic component of that downtown. Um, regarding parking, they're still creating a parking management plan and discussing capacity and enforcement. Um, I also went to the statewide broadband program, um, talking about increasing, the, the state would like to increase the, the broadband statewide to one gigabyte statewide. Um, there are two multi-million dollar grants that cover unserved and underserved areas in the state of Connecticut. One is for $40 million, the other is for $144 million. When you look at the broadband map in Connecticut, and then if you drill down to Fairfield County, then drill down further to Bethel, we don't really have a lot of underserved, unserved areas. There might be some that are underserved, and that is more related to perhaps education. There are some people that still don't understand how to access 
uh, maybe the Wi-Fi is not affordable. Um, so there's an education component. And also um, as we grow, there is there are some, uh, our schools do a great job, but there might be some kids that have parents um, from other countries. So there might be a language barrier. So it's more of an educational component and some of that grant would cover that. Um, there is an interest though, to, to increase the public Wi-Fi uh, in town that would cover large uh, parts of the municipal area. Um, and that would be, uh, there should be Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi in all of our buildings and our railway station. And there might be a possibility to have the Wi-Fi in parks, on the street, on trails. So that's something that we are gonna look into. Um, electric vehicle chargers. There also is, um, we would like to, uh, the town needs to conduct some kind of assessment related to electric vehicle chargers. There were two that were put in the from charge point at the um, at the railroad station. They're they've kind of passed their time, and while electric vehicles in and of themselves have not been mainstreamed and probably won't for some time, there are a lot of people that have them and are buying them. And if you live in an apartment, in a condo, or you just don't have space you don't have that opportunity to charge your vehicle. So um, we're gonna be looking at an assessment at some kind of plan and make some kind of recommendations related to location, demographics, density, types of um, different um, chargers that are, are available in the market. So we'll be working um, on that. And some, we don't really have to reinvent the wheel because some of this has already been done around the state of Connecticut and in Fairfield County in other towns so we can that, that help we can use them as a benchmark if that's if it makes sense um the food scrap program continues to grow there's more increased awareness in the spring the town will, will be providing um free compost at the transfer station for those who are interested um details are still being worked out um and of course there's still an interest in interest in continuing to discuss community gardens as part of this whole circular process. Um, that's my report. Any questions from the commission? I just wanted to clarify. Yes, ma'am. Um, you mentioned interest from Bethel Lantris for Community Match Fund. For the trees. Yeah, that was more like an idea, not... Oh, okay. Just I just wanted to okay, clarify that it isn't like a thing that will definitely happen more so it's a conversation i would like to start oh okay that thank you mm -hmm. well that's good that's a good conversation to have yeah absolutely anybody else okay. all right so consideration of approval for the october 18th minutes do i hear a motion so moved second i said it okay all in favor aye aye, aye. So in your packets, uh, Mary did a great job putting our um, 2024 meeting. It should be in there. Yeah, I'm checking to see if everybody was here at the last meeting. Oh, okay. Oh, they might have been online. Peter, were you here last time? I was not. Okay, so no, he can't. Right. Yes, yeah. okay. okay. So yeah, you have to think. Thank you again for reminding everybody if they were here or not. Um, okay, so consideration of approval of the 2024 meeting schedule for Sustainable Bethel Commission. It is in your packets. Hopefully you got a chance to look at that. Mary put this together. Next year, starting in January, January right? We'll, we'll be meeting in meeting room A. Any questions about, oh, let me hear a motion to, uh, to consider approval. So moved. Okay, second. Okay. Are there any questions about it? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Peter vote. Hmm? Did Peter vote? Oh, Peter, did you Do vote? I need to vote? Yes. No, I didn't. Okay, I. <laughs> I, 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 I thought since I wasn't there, I didn't vote. Well, no, this is a new um, approval. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, planning committee report. So we we met and um, went through uh, in detail. We had a pretty lengthy meeting. 
almost two hours, I think, right? Um, and we discussed where we were on the different elements and went through what kind of progress people were making and what we were gonna do and um, proceeded to talk about um, some of the, 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 the work of trying to compile different pieces of different sections of information and like your work with the land trust and trying to talk with those folks. And I, I know Kate, you were working also on the um, Earth Day uh, stuff in, in addition to other things. So so basically we're just, I, I guess the, the main report would be, we're working on getting our <laughs> certification, you know, and we're working through it. Um, I think everyone's got a lot of irons in the fire. So, um, you know, work in process. And then we're going to be getting together. Um, la, la, la. I know I have it. Oh, wait. Oh, 27. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm in February for some peculiar reason. <laughs> That was wow. interesting. I was you, like, just, you just jumped from man, Thanksgiving, just, Christmas. Man, I just New went through it all. <laughs> all right. No, we're going to be getting together on the 27th at 9.30. So yes. um, so I, I, I know for myself, I'm in the process of, I've got a lot of things from people, back from people. I just have to put it into, compile it into a usable format and we'll be able to post it. The one thing that we did talk about was... Um, the walk audit um, using the um, planner that AARP had put together um, to, to, to basically give you an outline of here's how you do a walk audit, here's how you organize it, here's the elements, here's what you need to have. Um, Catherine, you were going to get with, um, excuse me, with the folks um, from Economic development, Economic development yep, right? I did. To uh, to talk about where specifically we were going to to be uh, doing the walk on it, mm -hmm. and um, then we'll need to put together a committee of folks to work on that. Um, it it falls under the planning committee. I know I I am not the best person to put that together because a I'm a lot of traveling next year so i'm not going to be around a whole lot um but um but i think other people have skill sets in that area and and can help get that organized and and uh and and we'll do our walk on it um it is something that is being promoted across the state right now especially with the um complete streets and the um all the work that's being done to re reduce the pedestrian fatalities and accidents um which was a different meeting not related to this work but other work that i do um where they talked about this last year was the had the most uh accidents pedestrian fatalities of any uh year in connecticut and they think a lot of it is due to distracted drivers as well as distracted walkers and um <laughs> On my way here, I, I encountered a distracted walker who was walking their dog, wearing completely black and looking down at his phone. And the only reason why I saw him in the street was because his phone glowed a little bit as he was reading something. Otherwise, I would never have seen the person. He was walking right in the middle of the street. So um, it's easy to see why these kinds of things happen. Um, so. If you want, we can talk a little bit about who might want to be involved with the walk audit, or we can postpone that and pick it up again at our um, planning board meeting and and talk in depth about it then. However, you all would like to proceed. I mean, I, I I'm doing it. I guess I'm okay. <laughs> you, you raised your hand. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Um, so yeah, I. I'm taking this on. Uh, I will help uh, plan the actual event. Um, I'm hoping that other people will help me as time goes on. Um, oh, without a doubt, oh, you'll have help. It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just heading it up is really the, the challenging thing. And I do have some resources. I was just in Washington um, for some other work. And um, I, I touched base with a couple of people. So we may have some folks who we can tap into for some expertise about 
who's doing it, and also for some of the work that's being done in other cities across Connecticut. So we okay. may have that as well. Um, yes, thank you. Um, so basically, the one of the things that we have learned from all our different engagements with town residents is this sense of safety and increased walkability so that people around town feel safe. Uh, another major concern we've heard over time is the parking situation and increased traffic situation. Uh, as we've learned with other studies that have happened throughout town and throughout the state, it is, it is a matter of having a variety and mix alternatives of pedestrian safety, car safety, and it can look very differently depending on the area um, and the needs of that particular area. Um, one of the areas that the town has identified other than downtown is the Route 6 corridor. And there, there's a lot of new development. There's existing businesses. Um, there's a lot of traffic, there's limited parking, and there aren't very many sidewalks. Um, and the few public transportation stops are not the safest or most accessible. So that is something that town residents have mentioned to us. And it's certainly something that the town itself has also identified with the various sort of evals that they've done um, in determining which areas to focus on for further development, um, according to the, what's the acronym of that report? POCD. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, and looking forward to solidifying a date, like we said, we were looking at mid-May. Um, May 18th, May 19th is the date that I'm sort of tentatively interested in. If anybody has any major conflicts, Please try to change it now. <laughs> um, because yes, I think that weekend works on a lot of levels. It's not too hot, it's not too cold. There isn't a major uh, long weekend or vacation with the Bethel Public Schools. Um, so I think overall it'll be you know potentially great at capturing a lot of different you know groups around town. Um, one of the one of the things that we definitely need to do in order to have this walkability audit be really meaningful in capturing the actuality that the residents are experiencing is involving the local businesses, um, residences, uh, whatever is uh, organizations, whatever's in that area. Hopefully, we'll be able to touch base, get in contact, and have some sort of participation uh, on a volunteer basis. Um, and yeah, we'll be echoing from now until then um, what what the intention and the need for volunteers in order to capture their own experience walking throughout town, in particular, that area of town, so that we can gather information through this toolkit audit and, uh, you know, present what we find uh, to the town and hopefully that will add to whatever process they're going through in terms of evaluations and walkability and safety, um, transportation and all of that um, and how we can add recommendations and capture the experiences of you know, families, elderly, uh, disabled folks, uh, people in cars, um, people that are walking, people that use public transportation, people that would like to use public transportation, um, all the like, hopefully we'll capture a lot of different perspectives and that'll create a, a broad sense of what the town uh, will need to be addressed. Plenty of information, uh, May 19th is the Memorial Day Parade for the town. They have it a week before Memorial Day. Okay. I just didn't know if you knew that. I did, thank you. I have a question. Yes. Uh, so when we say downtown, like what are the specific starting pain points that sort of become? I think it's basically the sort of this whole building towards the train station. I think the main drag of Greenwood. Greenwood, thank you. Um, and 
sort of that included Barnard Square. Carol, Carol and Zee's and, and oh, yeah. that. Like from Carol Lucy's down that way up to. I'd say yeah, like, but our, our, our walk on it will be in a different area. It probably it won't be in the downtown area. It will be more something out in that Route Eight, Stony Hill six. Uh, six, uh, six, six. Sorry, I get all those wrong. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> but, we, know, we, we know what you mean. <laughs> but but it'll it, it's not going to be in this section of town. It'll be up up more towards yeah, towards the other end of the Stony yeah. Hill. Um, um, so kind of like from big Y all the way yeah, to Maple Wood. Yes. Maple Wood. Yeah. So yeah. The, the reason is because it's this area of town has been studied a lot. There's a lot going on here. Um, that area needs a little more effort right now. That's like the next phase. So and there's a lot of um, new development that's going on out that mm -hmm. way. If you've driven out there yeah. recently, I was there today and was shocked to see yeah. piles of dirt had just like gone away and yeah. all of a sudden the back there all yeah. kinds of stuff near big Y was or you know we we're little angels used to be right exactly yeah um so yeah so that's that's pretty much where we're going to be yeah anything else from anyone yes no okay so no nope. make it up again in our planning meeting so we can dive in. Yeah, and, oh, and, and get a lot of the detail work. Do you have something else? Um, I don't think Relate so. To walk on? Mm, no, that was the overview. Okay. Oh, yeah. No more questions. Okay. Uh, Tia, anything else? Nope, I'm done. All right. Okay. Yeah. okay. So any um, so commissioner reports? Did you want to just briefly say what's going on with those today? If there's anything. Um. <laughs> Or they, I have not started reaching out to people, but I have plans to start reaching out next week. Um, I have a lot of ideas that I jotted down last year, and so uh, okay. is there anything else? Um, I did have a conversation with Gabby and JG from Bethel Land Trust, and we went through a lot of our four different five different areas or in the certification. Um, okay. And just, he connected me with a few different people and just to pull together things that we already have that we can put towards the certification. We're not creating anything new. We're just utilizing what we have as much as we can and, um, and going to the next. Excellent. Um, had a good question. So Earth Day is tentatively sometime in March, correct? It's in April. It was on April 20th last year. I am. The 22nd is a Monday. I remember I saw that. Which is the actual Earth Day. Oh, so maybe it would be that Sunday. I don't know. I think that's also April vacation for Bethel Public Schools. Um, from my end, I have started looking at the worksheet uh, for the audit, and uh, I, once I have an update, I can for, for the energy, yeah, for the energy, for the energy audit. plan, right? That'd be great. Yeah. Peter. Yep. You got anything? No. Nope. Um, nothing related to Bethel, Connecticut. <laughs> But you're going to be you're going to be helping looking at the electric vehicle charger assessment yes. and the um, strategic plan that we're going to look at. I'm I'm going to discuss with the folks in New York City DOT uh, who are in charge of that and uh, get some insight from them. I was with them on Monday. That would be helpful. Any information that we can get that will help. The town of Bethel. I have some information from Richfield and other places in Western Connecticut. So we'll kind of look at all of that to see if it's relevant. Um, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Anybody else under related to commission reports? Any other business that anybody wants to discuss or bring up? No, no. Sure. Okay. <laughs> No. Okay. Oh, am I am I forgetting something? No, I'm just asking. <laughs> no. Yeah, I think a lot of the work is just being done behind, you know, individually. For the planning committee, especially with all of the yeah, all the work that that people are doing individually to 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 
gather the information and get it posted. So I think a lot of it's that, and you know, we can get more in depth with the 7.2s and the 5.4s right. and all that kind of stuff. So we can really have a detailed understanding as to what's going I on. I mean, I wrote some emails and I'm waiting for responses. Yeah, that's exciting. That's great. It's a it's a tough time of the year too. It's very the, tough. The holiday, you know, coming in, in. You know, a lot of places are closed for the whole week. What you know, a lot of places next week, working, yeah, they're working remote almost the whole week. So yeah. uh, it's just a challenge. And then once after Thanksgiving, then it just gets crazy. Yeah. For just escalates from there. Yes, it does. Um, okay, so if there's nothing else, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mary, as always. Thank you.